attended the, the last parliament held in Barcelona, and the Melbourne Summit promises to be every bit as successful as representatives continue to foster dialogue among the faiths and cultivate harmony among the world's religious and spiritual communities. Today, Victorians originate from more than uh, 200 ethnicities, speak more than 250 languages and dialects, and follow more than 120 faiths from around the world. Our cultural, linguistic and religious diversity forms the way of life that we now all share and enjoy. As Victorians from all walks of life, we share the common cause of building a community based on democracy, the rule of law and equal opportunity. And our success is evident. Indeed, we can be confident and proud to say we live in one of the world's most multicultural, peaceful and cohesive societies. And you only have to think uh, a few weeks back with the memorial service at Rod Laver Arena for the, um, the bushfires. And for me, the highlight of that memorial service was the section with our faith communities. And uh, a particular highlight, and we had a chat about this before the event, because I was involved with Tony in actually um, the format of the event, the use of the, uh, the shofar to uh, introduce the minute silence. And I thought it was a great example of the kind of society uh, that we live in and that we celebrate and we come together uh, from all faiths and communities um, as we uh, mourn the, uh, the recent bushfires. I want to say also that the Jewish community uh, has been and continues to be a leader in promoting cultural harmony. And uh, uh, I knew that, but I, I, I've really lived that since the time that uh, I've been the Minister assisting the Premier on Multicultural Affairs, and I wanted to acknowledge the leadership role of our Jewish community. Our success in multiculturalism comes from a combination of uh, good governance, the goodwill of our diverse communities, and the consensus of broader Victorian society. But as a community, we must, we must always renew and strengthen our commitment to multiculturalism. And the Brumby government is constantly working to achieve this. We've provided over $4.1 million over four years to a multitude of initiatives to promote community harmony, which includes our funding towards local interfaith and multi-faith dialogue, strengthening awareness of religious diversity within our community. And we've also sought to facilitate greater dialogue between the government and faith-based communities through the establishment of the Premier's Multi-Faith Advisory Group and a Multi-Faith Multicultural Youth Network, which is a great group of young people. Although Victoria is one of the world's most successful multicultural societies, we must not become complacent. And that's a very strong message that I get from the Jewish community. We will continue to work to achieve a socially progressive society that reaps the real social, cultural and economic benefits that are inherent within our multicultural Victoria. Now, uh, Tony, Jennifer and I, we have to shoot off shortly because today's a parliamentary sitting day, um, but we always enjoy the ability to uh, sneak away from Parliament and attend functions such as this. Uh, but can I say that I feel particularly honoured to be here today to celebrate the Festival of Purim. Dialogue and harmony are particular, uh, particularly poignant themes during this festival. A festival of celebration and austerity in equal measures, it is also a time of charitable acts, a time of celebration and a time to reflect on the past and look to the future as one community. I'd like to conclude by wishing everyone a most enjoyable festival of Purim. Thank you and shalom. Thank you, the Honourable John James Marino, for those kind words. At this point, I'd like to call upon the State Member for Prayer, Mr. Tony Lachlan. Thank you very much to uh, learned rabbis, to uh, my uh, ministerial colleague James Molino and parliamentary colleague Jennifer Huppert and uh, Lord Mayor. Councillor Robert Doyle. It's great to see uh, Les Ernie, a uh, great uh, friend of my, uh, my wife's family uh, here with us today. Les has done such a, a, an enormous number of great works around, uh, around our, our great city over the years and uh, uh, he's a, a terrific friend. It's wonderful to be here with him. And uh, looking around the audience here today, so many good friends here to all of you. Welcome. And I just want to add a few uh, brief words because I know we have a number of speakers today. Uh, but I think all of the festivals and holy days are important to us. And 
certainly that goes for the Festival of Purim. And all of us uh, in modern life find, I think, some sense of help and assistance in all of the things that we have to do by learning some of the lessons out of the history. And Purim is no exception to that. And I suppose some of us who have the privilege to serve in, in public office have choices to make. And Purim, I think, is a, a good time for all of us in those offices to reflect on the choices we make and hopefully make those choices that will lead to a stronger, a more inclusive community for us all while maintaining those important cultural and ethnic identities which are so important to us. Getting that balance right, I think, is what we need to do and I believe uh, echoing the words of uh, my colleague James Molin, I think here in Victoria we've done a very good job of getting that right. And that's not just down to governments, it's down to every individual who makes a contribution to making our community the sort of place that all of us can live in peacefully, safely, securely and happily. So uh, that's, I think, uh, my take on the, the Festival of Peru, but it's also, of course, one where I was able to enjoy a glass of red wine last night with dinner at without any guilt whatsoever, which is a very nice thing. And uh, I know that all of, our, uh, all of our children particularly get a great thrill out of Purim, all of the, the costumes and the dressing up, uh, whether they're uh, going to school or kindergarten, and uh, it's, uh, it's a great, uh, great happy festival, a wonderful time for all of us. I do uh, wish everyone well and have some aid to you. Thank you, Mr. Tony Lufton, State Member for Pran. I'd like to call upon Mr. Robert Doyle, the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, to address us. Oh, happy period. Um, James Molino, the uh, Minister assisting the Premier. Um, James said before that it's a pleasure for Jennifer, Tony and himself to slip out of Parliament. Can I promise you, when you slip right out of Parliament, it's an even greater pleasure, mate. So, uh, all of that is yet before you, uh, but uh, can I just promise you there is life afterwards. Tony Lupton, the member for Paran, the Cabinet Secretary, and Jennifer Hubbard. Jennifer, welcome to one of the most strange professions in the world, but uh, I, I hope you enjoy it uh, as, as much as I did. Um, to rabbis, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, a special hello to Les. Um, I was, Les was just reminding me, it was probably 12 years ago he first started nagging me on behalf of the Jewish community. Um, and it is just a pleasure to see you here today, Les, and, and looking so well. Looking even younger than you look on the cover of the uh, cover magazine. Uh, could I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we are gathered today, the members of the Kulin Nation, and pay my deep personal respects to their elders, past and present. Okay, now I've got a test for you as I start this very short speech. Recently I opened the comedy festival and in a fit of bravado I told a joke. Nobody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> now Purim is a very happy time and so I'm going to tell a Purim joke. And if you don't laugh, this is the last one I'll ever tell. <laughs> and you can leave it up to yourselves about whether that's a good or a bad thing. So, here we go. And it's actually a true story, more than a joke. I promise you, it is a, it is a true story. You'll recall the very honoured service that Golda Meir gave as, uh, uh, to the office of Prime Minister of Israel. And during that time, of course, as is not unusual, Israel found itself under attack from many sides. I know that's not unfamiliar to you, but at that time it was particularly true. And what she was trying to do was to gather support from around the world from very distinguished jury who were in senior positions. And of course, one of the people that she decided she would need to call upon for his support was Henry Kissinger. And so she made representations to Kissinger that he should, in his public pronouncements, make Israel his top priority. Kissinger wrote back to the Prime Minister making it very clear that number one, he was an American citizen. Number two, he was the Secretary of State. And number three, he was a Jew. <laughs> <laughs>